Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Guys and Magic. This is Hunter, Steven, and Shane. Say what up, boys. Hey, guys. What up, nerds? We are back. This time, August 24th, 2023. The final day of spoiler season. That's right. We're at the finish line here. So we will be talking about the top five most talked about cards today. We're talking about the top three cards we missed, according to Reddit. And we're talking about the top three most liked cards on our Instagram. That's right. You guys decide what we talk about that we haven't already. So, before we get started, I just want to make an announcement. We will be going to Magic Con Las Vegas. That is Let's right. Go. The guys at Magic will be represented at the convention. Excited to be there with you guys. That's right. If you guys see us, don't be shy. Say hello. We'll be there. We'll be probably bringing some cool stuff to give away to anybody that says hello. So. Yeah, we're going to be there at the end of September. But let's jump into spoiler season. The wrapping up Wilds of Eldraine. The first card we're talking about today is Archive Dragon. Four and two blue for four six creature dragon wizard. It's got flying, ward two, and when it enters the battlefield, scry two. Very simple and to the point. I think a lot of people like this card because of the art. It is a very cool dragon. All right, moving on to the next one. He's, he's a wizard. Oh, oh, we want to actually talk about it? Look, he's a wizarding, dude. Yeah, he's a wizard, Harry. It does seem more of like a limited bomb, I will say, Hunter. It is a limited bomb. Cool, though. It is cool. Steven, would you throw this dragon into a dragon? Nope, never. <laughs> Not cool he, enough. He knows how to read, though. Look at cool. all the books. He can scry in another deck. Oh, hell yeah. Fascinating. It says here that dragons cannot read. Yeah, <laughs> no, get it? I think it's a, a limited bomb, like you said, Shane. I like this card. It's it, it's a good pickup if you're yeah. playing in a sealed event. Mm-hmm. Let's move on to another one. This is Mintstrosity. Mintstrosity is one and a black for a 3-1 creature horror. This is when it dies, you create a food token. That's terrifying. I mean, this is hysterical but i love this card it's why do you love it uh cheap it's a three one creates a food when it dies so essentially you could sacrifice this for bargain you can utilize this for rolls this would be really really cool i'm actually really excited for this in standard this probably won't see playing i think it will i don't think it just seems like a limited card again to me i don't know Steven might be onto something there. You think? Yeah. Well, you tell me why. It's aggressive. It's more all of us. Make a food token when it dies, like you said. You can sack that food for a bargain. Something later. Seems, seems decent. I'm not going to uh -huh. lie. I know this might sound aggressive, but I even think this would, I'd play this in a EDH deck. I don't mm -hmm. think. I wouldn't go that far. I'm gonna you're getting crazy, far. dude. Yeah, you're getting a little crazy there. Moving on to Protective Parents. Two and a white for a 3-2 creature human peasant. It says, when Protective Parents die, create a young hero roll token attached to up to one target creature you control. How sad is this card? The only sad <laughs> thing about this card is that it doesn't, it's a creature human peasant and not human peasants. Yeah. They don't, they don't do multiples in subtype. I mean, However, I get it. It's Batman. Oh, shut up. This is right. We're talking about Batman here. That's a hint at the next secret lair. <laughs> shut up. And you told me I'm getting too excited? Yeah. There's, I don't know, dude. This card's <laughs> out on the list because it's, it's the flavor, right? The, the flavor's there. Uh, okay. Protective parents dying and you get a young hero. That's exactly the story of batman moving on to the next card that was talked about is edge wall pack edge wall pack is three and a red for a three three creature dog it's got menace and it says when it enters the battlefield create a one one black rat creature token with this creature can't block i feel like uh, leave it to reddit to always upvote dogs or just I animals think, in general i think i finally understand why we only talk about the rares and the mythics this is what you finally cracked the code. Finally, think I cracked the code here. 
Hey, Edge Wall Pack isn't terrible. It's two, you awful, get two dude. body. No, 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 no. You get two bodies for four mana, four power, and this has menace. Cool. Not, not terrible. In standard, it could see play. No. You think really? Yeah, it could be. Man, you got some wild takes tonight. All right, I'm just gonna pull. I'm gonna pull me a Shane. You ready? You yeah. know, Hunter. I, I think. Uh, I think this is a limited bomb. <laughs> hey, this would definitely see play unlimited. I'll tell you that right now. All right, I saved the best for last. We'll move on. This is Cooped Up. Cooped Up is one and a white for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature, enchanted creature can't attack or block. You can also pay two and a white to exile enchanted creature. Wow. Yeah, that's good removal on standard. This is great. Yep. Yeah, this is uh, this is called Power Creep, friends. Mm-hmm. This is strictly better version of Pacifism. everybody's favorite. Pacifism. That's right. Say it together, Steven. Good card. Pacifism. Good. Oh. Oh. It's, it's fun. We, we, we tried. No, this is definitely seeing play in standard. This is probably seeing play in EDH. This is seeing play in a lot of places. Mm hmm. Yeah. Just exiling anything that you would chant on top of it for two mana seems good. Dude, good imagine. Good card, good. Yeah, putting this on, like, we're talking about EDH. Any commander that needs to attack to do things. Like, your dinos, dude? No, no. Yeah, Can I ask a question? In response to trying to kill this, you just exile the chant creature. <laughs> and let's move on to the Enchanting Tales, the final two they announced today. Primal Vigor and Waste Not. Steven, you love enchantments. What do you think of these ones? I love enchantments. Dude, that Waste Not's beautiful. The I'm looking at my deck. It's not so okay. It's I shut up. I really do prefer other artworks for Waste Not. I won't lie. It is cool, but you know, when I see it, like I get the mono back, I get the mono black vibe from it, but it's not like, I, I don't know. The Primal Vigor, I think, is a cool card. I just, I'm not a big fan that this is basically a universal, you know? Mm -hmm. That's my, yeah. that's, that's the thing I don't like about it, but you know, I get it. It's cool. It kind of has the aspects of Primal Vigor, like the original artwork of it. So it's kind of nice. Little little callbacks. I like both of the arts here. I think these are awesome reprints. And I'm very excited to open up a pack and not get one of these awesome reprints. True. Bubble, bubble, boil and trouble. <laughs> Make me cookies. Let's move on to the top three cards that we missed, according to Reddit, uh, that we did not talk about. For the week of spoiler season, the first one, Cheeky House Mouse. It is an adventure. That his first part is called Squeak By, which is one white mana for a sorcery. It says target creature you control gets plus one plus one until end of turn. It can't be blocked. And it can't be blocked by creatures with power three or greater this turn. And of course, Cheeky House Mouse does cost one white mana for a two one. Um, yeah, that's, that's just good for mono white aggro, dude. Yeah. A one mana two one. That's solid. Yep. I mean that's the only thing I actually think I like about this card. Well, I mean that's it's it has upside like, th things like this are, we're already seeing play in like other versions of mono white aggro, Steven in in standard, so like this seems like an easy card to put in there. Get back here, vile rodent. I was almost done cursing that, right? People also say the mouse is cute. Mouse oh, is yeah, the animal. So cute. Such a cute mouse. That witch back there is pretty cute, dude. Wow. I mean, do they say that if that witch caught it, it'd be a dead cute mouse? Good point. But it's cheeky. So, no. <laughs> Moving on to the card that we missed this week. Quick study. Two and a blue. For an instant, draw two cards. That's insane. Did we miss it because it's bad? No. Are you kidding me? It's a very good card, Steven. This it's card's not. insane, dude. This card... We talked about power creep. This is power creep, dude. Nah. Yeah. Power creep. What do you mean, nah, sure. dude? Um, it's power at? creep. Power creep divination. Which is a very good card. Divination what used to be a four of back in the day in standard. Divination being the exact same text. Except it was sorcery speed. 
um, from early days of magic divination. And it was a four of because it was that good just to draw two cards. Yeah, and now it's at instant speed. Like, this is going in all the blue decks, dude. Yeah. Quick study. Nope. Steven, this <laughs> card is insane, dude. Nope. I can't believe it's common. It is a common. This is going to be great for Popper, too. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. And the last card we missed, according to Reddit, was Discerning Financier. This is two and a white for a 2-3 creature, human noble. It says, at the beginning of your upkeep, if an opponent controls more lands than you, create a treasure. You can also pay two and a white. Choose another player. That player gains control of target treasure you control. You draw a card. Um, this seems good. I like the treasure production for sure, dude. It's a very good card design. I do like the first piece of the text. Yeah. Steven, it ensures that past turn three, if you have this card on the field, you never miss a land drop. In air quotes. Yes. If my opponents constantly hit their lands. Which, let's be honest, they will. I mean, if they're a hunter. Hey, if, you don't, if you don't hit your lands, this is fantastic for you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Just so has to stay on the field. True. The bottom part, like you're alluding to, Steven, though, is mm, questionable. I get that you could draw a card, but just giving someone a treasure token, that's very powerful. Yeah, I mean, you know, I look at this and I think of like, you know, other cards that are like three mana. They do something for you slash your opponent. So like, I mean, what this comes into mind, I mean, it's a different style card, but um, Lauren of the Third Path. So it reminds <laughs> me of Lauren in the aspect of like, it's kind of doing something for you and also doing something for an opponent. Uh, now, granted, you know, lore and destroy something, this will get you a land pretty much every, this will get you a treasure token pretty much every turn, if you kind of play your cards right, and hopefully get lucky. Well, if you miss your line drop. Yeah. But instead of, you know, your opponent drawing the card, they get a treasure and you draw a card. So, I mean, it kind of reminds me in that kind of aspect, but. It's kind of I cool. disagree. I don't see I mean, any similarity there. They may cost the same. But. I don't know. I think this card is good. I like this card a lot. Oh, I see the difference now. Lauren has Vigilance. This one doesn't. That's, yeah, <laughs> that's the difference. And finally, moving on to the top three cards that were most liked on our Instagram that we didn't already talk about because there was plenty of rares and mythics that were liked more than these ones. But the first one is Stroke of Midnight. It is two and a white for an instant. Destroy target non land permanent. Its controller creates a 1 1 white human creature token. We had a discussion about this card, not in the video, that how this is potentially a better generous gift. What do you I think? I think it Shane? is. I think yeah. I was having that conversation with you. Mm -hmm. I think that it is. I think that, sure, generous gift, you're able to hit land. But if I'm being completely honest, uh, land, I maybe hit two out of 10 times. Maybe two at maybe one at a ten. Wow, times. you're you're a dick. Oh, well, that's what I'm saying. Like sometimes, no, sometimes you will get rid of like a bad land. You need to get out of there. I don't just mean like a boring ass land, but this okay. You can't hit a non land, or you get to hit a non land, but a one one I think is so much better than a three three. Like it's just a strictly better card. All right, guys, you heard it here first. Chain plays land destruction. Okay, <laughs> one out of ten times. I agree with you, Chain. Uh giving them a 1-1 one, one instead of a 3-3. Three, three. I know a lot of people are going to say, that doesn't really matter. Well, it does when you're playing certain effects that are giving minus 2, minus 2 to stuff like an Elish Norn on the field. The original Elish Norn. That automatically kills something. So, it's pretty cool. I mean, this card is fantastic. Good card, good. Hey, hey this time we'll do it together. This time, right? Ready? All right, count it down. Count it down. Okay. 1-2- Good, good card, card good. good. Those are my friends, everybody. Moving on, we are talking about Totentan's Swarm Piper. One, a black, and a red. For a 2-3 legendary creature human warlock bard, is whenever it or another non-token creature you control dies, create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token with this creature camp block. It also has another ability. We can pay one and a black target attacking rat you control against death touch to end a turn. What's his name? Totentans. Wait, one more time? Totentans. Why can't you? All right, now say it five times fast. Totentans. You're just being very, like, you're a nut. Oh, sorry, okay. 
This card seems good in an Aristocrat's deck, right? It does seem good in an Aristocrat's deck. I mean, obviously, we'll talk about this more in our Commander Grades video, as it is a legendary. But in a standard environment, Shane, we have been talking about this for like three videos now. Rakdos Rats seems to be a real thing. Yeah, I think it might. I think it might be a thing. If it, if not in standard, it will one hundred percent be an archetype in draft. I agree. Uh, this card makes me want to build a Rakdos Rat. Deck. I I actually really love this card. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, I know we're at the end of spoiler season, so I'll go ahead and talk about this just slightly as a commander. Uh, I think this would be a pretty fun commander uh, any any time of the day right here. We'll, yeah, we'll you talk and... more in the grades video about that. I'm curious I'm gonna to say see more of your opinions. We're going to definitely dive into this, but just like the other commanders we already talked about, any commander that will activate itself, you don't have to, have to put rats in this deck. This could be the one that creates the rats for you, but I'm sure you'll hear me say that again in the next video. <laughs> nah, 30 rat colonies. Sure. Always. And the final card that was most liked by you guys is Eerie Interference. Two and a white for an instant. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to you and creatures you control this turn by creatures. Well, it's no ultimatum, but... <laughs> it is no wow. Eerie Ultimatum. That's funny. I like uh, it for that joke. Did you get that one, Steven? Oh, I got it. I think it's an interesting card because it, it's, it doesn't say combat damage, meaning... You can prevent something that's like an unlimited combo that's like, I'm going to ping you for however many. Yeah. So that's what makes this card different. And I think that is pretty nice. This card sucks. <laughs> Why don't you like this card, Steven? Because it can't do the things I wanted to do. Oh, okay. I want to survive a Blasphemous Act for once in my life without playing Teferi's Protection. Well, keep playing yeah. Teferi, dude. But, uh, like I said, though, this card is good in terms of I'm going to deal a million damage to you with my pinging commander, and you'll say, no, you're not. Yeah, no. but see, I was going to kind of go off of what you just said there, because if it is an actual infinite combo in this situation, they can then just respond to you playing this and do infinite again. So that wouldn't matter. And then you would die before this card goes off. I guess you're right. But either way, you can still prevent it if they don't sure. realize. Yeah. I don't know. Eerie Interference. I just, I don't know. I like the drop of combat damage. Just a little more flexibility. Sure. No, you're, you're right. But that is going to do it for us today. I hope you guys enjoyed the final day of spoiler season like we did. First and foremost, before we get going, Steven, what was your favorite card we talked about today? I'm going to be honest with you. If I had to pick one card, I think I'm actually going to pick and I, uh, never mind. I'm not going to pick Minstrosity. Uh, I'm going to pick Totenzan or whatever, you, however you pronounce that name. Totentans. Totentans. Honor, I'm going to pick the card that is correct. And I know you're probably going to pick it, but I'm going to pick it first. It's a quick study. Hands down. No questions asked. I knew you were going to pick that. I had a feeling. But my favorite is Stroke of Midnight. Just a better, generous gift, in my opinion. And I'm a mono white player, so. This is going to slide into a lot of things. I like it a lot. But comment down below telling us what your favorite card we talked about today was. Also, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And in the description, you'll find links to our Instagram, our TikTok, and our Twitter. That's at Guys at Magic for each one. Follow us on those as well to keep up to date with everything else we got going on. And until the next video, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace. Bye. Later.